Microsoft Excel 210 functions. The sum function. Here we have the various sales regions and over here we have the number of sales. So for instance in the north there's 34 sales and in the south there's 98 sales and so on and so forth. Now if I click in this cell, uh, cell C8, what we want to do is we want to use the sum function to sum up the total number of sales. Now if you look at the home tab here, over here we have this thing called auto sum. If I just click on auto sum and then press return, look what happens. The result is displayed. If I click on the cell, the cell C8, here we see that we're in cell C8 and over here we see the actual function formula. So it's um, inserted the syntax uh, equals sum open brackets range C4 to C7 close brackets. And as you can see the range is specified by the semicolon there or the colon rather. So basically it's done all this automatically for us. Let's do that one more time. I'll delete that. So all I had to do was click here where we want the column to be totaled. I go to where it says auto sum, press return and that's it. And as you can see, the result that displayed there is uh, 254, which is the sum of all these values. Now, if I just delete that again, there are various other ways we can use the uh, the auto sum. So, for instance, in this case, I clicked where I want the auto sum to be inserted and went over here. Another way of doing it would be to click on this item here where it says insert function. And from there, you've got access to various functions. So if you want to the sum function, I click on sum, click on OK click on OK again and there's again it's been uh, inserted there. Uh, if you want to see another way of doing it you could click here then go where it says uh, formula so click on the formulas tab then click on the auto sum button press return and again the uh, auto sum is uh, inserted there. So as you can see there's various ways of uh, actually uh, accessing the auto sum function and um, it doesn't really matter which way you use as long as you just find one that works for you. And again, if we go and look at the syntax, the syntax is equals, um, equal sum open, bra open brackets, then you specify the range, and then you close the brackets. Now, in this particular case, all I had to do, if I delete that, all I had to do was click there, click here and press return, and you notice it did the auto sum automatically. Now, if I delete this, and if I just drag across those, and I'll drag that someplace else just to um, show the concept. In this particular case, what I've done is I've moved this, the target cell, someplace else. It's not directly below the column anymore. So we're going to make life slightly difficult for ourselves. So in this case, I want the auto sum function to appear here. So I'll click where it says auto sum. And can you notice that this time it's only done half the work for us. It's, it's basically used the function. It says equals sum, open brackets, close brackets. But it doesn't actually know what you want to auto sum because it's not conveniently placed just directly above it. So in this case, what I have to do is I have to specify the range. So in order to do this, I just click here with the mouse button pressed down. I just drag down to the end of the range I'm interested in. And when I let go, that range will be inserted there automatically. When I press return and then click within that cell, you can see that the, basically the uh, function is saying, use the sum function to uh, sum up a range. Which one? The one that goes from here to here, from C4 to C7. So I'll do that one more time just so it's, it's clear. I click there, go to auto sum. It doesn't know what range we're talking about. I drag across the range, press return, and there you are. It's created the auto sum, and uh, you see the value there, and you can see the syntax inserted there for you. So that's auto sum using the average function. In this particular case, we've got the sales regions and we've got the sales from each region. If I click here, if I want to see the average, I can just click on the down arrow here under auto sum, select average. And because it's directly above the the, um, the average numbers we want directly above, it'll select the range automatically. If you press return, and then click in there to see what's happened, you can sell within. You can see within cell um, C8, it's correctly inserted the average function. So the syntax is equals average open brackets C4 colon C7 close brackets. So it's basically saying 
show me the average and display it in this cell for the range C4 down to C7 there and that's exactly what it's done and of course if we change one of those figures if we change it top one to say 20 as you can see the average figure will change there now if I delete that for a minute and if I did whoops and if I just move that someplace else so it's like here for instance if we try that again so in this case I'm making this the, the active cell and if I click here and go and look at the average in this case it's only done half the work because it doesn't know what uh, cell range you want to actually average so it's um, inserted the, um, the correct syntax it says equals average open brackets close brackets but I now have to specify manually the the actual range that I wish to average so if I click here and drag across these numbers then let go of the mouse button you can see it inserts the range if I press enter as you can see the average has now been inserted into this particular cell using the max function here we have some sales regions and here we have the number of sales and within here I want to specify the maximum number of sales for, um, for a, a particular region so what I can do is if I click on the down arrow here I can click where it says max and because the cells that we're talking about are directly above this it inserts the syntax that says equals max open brackets c4 colon c7 close brackets and if I press return and then go and click on that to just verify what happened it's basically saying show me the maximum number within the range c4 to c7 here's the range c4 to c7 the maximum number is obviously 84 which is why 84 is displayed there in this case that's kind of self-evident but obviously if you had a much more complicated much longer set of data then that's when this would become useful using the minimum function in this case we've got sales regions down here and we've got the number of uh, sales for each region so what I want to display here is the number of sales that is the minimum for each region just by purely looking at these the minimum is going to be 11 we can tell that in this case because it's only a small set of data this is obviously going to be much more useful if you've got a very large set of data but uh, this just shows you the concept so we click here if I click on the down arrow under auto sum and select min for minimum it's basically I'd correctly identifying the range that we're interested in so it's saying equals min open brackets c4 colon c7 close brackets so if I press return and then click there again as you can see we're looking at the minimum number in the range c4 to c7 and display it here and sure enough it's the number 11 obviously if we change one of those numbers if I change that one to 8 that would then become the minimum which will be displayed here the count function the count function basically counts up the number of cells from the range that have a, a number within them right what we're going to do is click here and use the count uh, function to basically count up the number of items here and then the number of items here so if we click here and we're going to use the count function so if I click on where it says formula then where it says more functions here if I go and look at statistical options here if it's not displayed any place else from here you can select the count function so basically it's selecting the count function here now as you can see this is a, a common problem you see with Excel it's basically specifying the range 17 to 18 because there are numbers in cell C17 and C18 but we want to specify the whole of the range here so we need to make sure we either change that manually or failing that if we just click over here we can just drag down here and as you can see when I let go of the mouse button it's basically saying specify the range uh, C5 to C18 rather than the range which was C18, C17 C18 originally so if I check that's OK which it is and if I click on OK you will now see that basically it's found 11 values. Let's count them up by hand. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So that's correct. So there are 11 people present. Let's click here and see how many people are not present. And again, we can go to more functions, to statistical, go to count. And again, we have to drag across the range that we're interested in. And the range in this case is D5 to D18. Click on OK 
and sure enough, one, two, three, it summed up the number of cells within the range that contain numbers. So that's basically how you use the count function. Using the count a function, the count a function will basically sum up the number of cells that are not empty. So it doesn't just contain, need to contain numbers, it can contain anything, in this case an X or a 1. So if I click here, click on where it says, well click on formulas, click on where it says more functions, go to statistical, if we go and find count A, which is there, specify the range, so if we drag down the range, that basically takes care of the syntax for us. So we click on OK, and then go and click there to see what it's actually done. It's basically saying equals count A, I use the count A function, specify the range within brackets, which is C5 to C18. And as you can see, we've got the number 12 being displayed here. So let's see if that's right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And as you can see, it doesn't matter whether it, it contains numbers or something else. So for instance, if I can write something in there like uh, my name, for instance, and it won't affect the result. And so as I say, unlike count, which will count up uh, cells with numbers, this will count up cells with anything within them. If I uh, type in my name in this one as well, as you can see, that now counts within the count A. So that's now gone up to 13. If I delete one of these here, as you can see, that's been updated. Right, using the count blank function. In this particular case, I'm going to click here. And what I want to do is I want to use this information to see how many delegates are absent. So basically, this is like a, a register, if you like. So this delegate here has been marked as a present present, present, nothing for this one, and nothing for this one. So what I want to do is use the count blank to count up the number of blank entries. So if I go to, well, start off with functions, then go to more functions here, go to statistical, then I want to go to count blank, which is here. I specify the range by dragging across it like so. So basically we specify the range C5 to C18, which is OK. Click on OK. And if I just click on that cell to see what we've got, we're basically saying equals count blank in the range C5 to C18, which is C5 to C18. And we have the number two being displayed because we have two blank cells. If I have another blank cell, it goes up to three. If I have another blank cell, again, it goes up to uh, four. And if I put uh, something in there like so, as you can see, it uh, it changes the uh, the numbers as we go. So in this case, I've just had one blank cell remaining, and sure enough, we just got one. So that's how you use count blank. Using the if function, we can use the if function to define a test, and dependent on the result of that test, you can have different outcomes. So if you look what we've got here, we've got people's names down here, and then we've got their results for individual subjects. So we've got maths, uh, English, history and geography, and these have been average. So the average result for this person here is 66. The average result for the second person is 69 and so forth. And we need to know whether they passed or failed overall. So what we can do is we can say basically any results above 70, 70 or more, are a pass. Um, anything less than that um, are a fail. So basically, if I click on where it says logical and select if, um, there's various um, items we can do, but we can say but something like uh, if, if the contents of um, I8 are above 70, so basically 70 or above, so or rather above 70 in this case, we're going to say that the value, if true, is a pass. And if false, it's a fail. So let's look at what we've actually done. We're basically saying, if this value here is above 70, you can have equals to and above and all the rest of it. But in this case, we'll just keep it simple. So we're saying, if the value here is above 70, it's a pass. And uh, the value, if true, is pass. If you fail that test, i.e. if it's uh, 70 or below, then it's going to be a fail. 
So I click on OK here, and sure enough you see the word fail there. If I move the mouse pointer here and just drag down, so we repeat that down there, we've got fail and fail. Why? Because these are below 70. Uh, this one here is above 80, so that's a pass. That's 69, so close, but still a fail I'm afraid. And these two here, they're above 70, they're passes. So again, if you look at the syntax here, it's basically saying if, and then within that we have this bracketed area. So we're specifying the condition, we're saying basically if the contents of this cell here, and it's relatively copied all the way down, if that is greater than 70, if it's true, do this, i.e. display the word pass. If it's not true, i.e. if it's uh, less than that, display the word fail. And that's a sort of simple exa uh, example of how you'd use the, the if function. As I say, it can be far more powerful than that, but you kind of get the idea. Mm -hmm.